Hi everyone, I'm Sophie with Admin by Request and today I am giving you a little demonstration of our integration with ServiceNow. So before we get into it, our main goal with this integration was to bring you the benefits of Admin by Request via a platform that you might already be familiar with or you might already be using. And the way we have done that is by replicating key features of our software in ServiceNow. So let's get into it. I'm going to start by giving you a quick look at the requests and audit log features in the admin by request user portal because these are the two features available in our ServiceNow app. If you're already familiar with our software, just bear with me while I cover the basics for those who aren't. So in our requests page, we have our pending requests. So for each one of these, a user has discovered that they need elevated privileges in order to do something on their device and they have used the admin by request software installed on their endpoint to request the elevated access that they need. As the administrator or the portal user, I have the option to approve or deny these requests. If I click approve, uh, the user is granted the elevated privileges that they have requested. If I click deny, another window opens up and from here I have the option to provide a reason as to why I'm denying their request, otherwise I can simply confirm the deny. If we navigate to the audit log, so each audit log entry here correlates to a request, be that a runner's admin request in this tab or an admin session request over here. And I will cover the difference between those two a bit later on. If we expand into one of the audit log entries, it gives me all of the available data. So we've got the contact information, uh, any alerts, the installed or uninstalled software, if any, and the programs that were executed using elevated privileges. So these are the requests and audit log features in a nutshell. And it's these features that we have replicated in our ServiceNow application. What I'm going to do now is demonstrate the entire approval flow from start to finish. This process can be split up into four sections. Number one, the user makes a request on the endpoint. Number two, the admin approves the request in ServiceNow. Number three, the user actually uses or consumes the request on the endpoint, so they do what they wanted to do with elevated privileges. And number four, what the data from that request actually looks like in ServiceNow. So starting as the user, there are several options available to me if I want to gain elevated privileges. And in this video, I'm just going to cover the two main methods. So I can either right click the single application I want to run as administrator and select run as administrator, or I can double click this administrator access icon to request an admin session. So the difference between the two is that the first option only elevates the selected application, whereas the second option allows me to perform multiple administrative tasks on my device within a period of time. So in this example, let's say I want to run command prompt as administrator, but I also want to install some drivers. So the best option for me is to request an administrative session. So what this will do is bring up a tailored UAC prompt, which asks me to enter my email address, my contact number, and a reason for wanting elevated privileges. So I will type in here. Click OK and confirm and that request is now sent to your admin by request user portal where it is then pulled into your ServiceNow application to be approved in there by an administrator or a designated approver. So as the user my job is done and I now just wait for approval. As the admin in my ServiceNow instance I navigate to the admin by request app and I click into the requests page. So just like in the admin by request user portal, I have got my list of pending requests right here. And if I click into one, it gives me the exact same information that I would see in the admin by request user portal. So we've got the user details, request details, and of course the reason provided by the user. And down here, I have the option to either approve or deny the request. So again, this should all look and feel very familiar if you have used the admin by request interface before. So for this request, which is our user's request to have an admin session to install some drivers, I am going to go ahead and click approve. 
which will send an email notification to the user saying their request has been approved and they can now initiate the admin session. Going back to our pending requests, I'm going to open another one. And this time I am going to click deny. Uh, and just like in the user portal, clicking deny prompts me to give an optional reason for the denial, which I will do in this example. Click yes. And that user is now sent an email notification telling them that their request for admin access has been denied and why. So back to the user, let's look into those emails. In my inbox, I have two unopened emails from the admin by request team. Clicking into one, I can see immediately that this request has been denied and I can see the reason provided by the admin. Uh, this request, on the other hand, has been approved and it's also given me some brief instructions on what to do next, which is repeat the exact same action that I took when I requested admin access. So in my case, I wanted an admin session, so I double clicked the desktop icon. So at this time, instead of the UAC prompt appearing, a timer appears in the bottom right hand corner of my desktop indicating that I now have the admin access required to do what I need to do and this is the amount of time remaining for me to do it. And of course all of my privileged activity during this admin session is logged in the audit log which we will get to shortly. So let's do what we needed to do which is run command prompt as admin. So confirm when the UAC prompt appears. And that should open up and we'll do something here. And while we wait for that, I also wanted to install some drivers. So, where is it? I have downloaded a driver for my tablet. I'm going to run that. And when this UAC prompt appears, I, instead of putting admin credentials, I just put my regular user credentials. So I am using a fake guest account that I made, not the official Microsoft guest account, just my own guest account. So those are my regular user credentials. They're not any admin credentials and they will work for this because of my admin session. So that will start and just while we're waiting something to note is that this timer down here I can set or the admin can set how long the admin session is so that's all adjustable. You can tailor it to your needs. Okay, so I'm going to restart later and now we'll just pretend that's finished. Uh, when I've done everything that I need to do that required elevated privileges, I can click finish down in my admin session window, which asks me for confirmation that I've definitely finished. So I'll go ahead and click yes. And as the user, that's all there is to it. And I can just repeat the whole process the next time I need elevated privileges. Back to the admin side of things. So all of the data from the admin session that my user just finished is now available in ServiceNow. If we navigate to the audit log page, listed here are all of the entries from various users and clicking into this most recent entry, we get all of its available data, including in the activity log section down the bottom, every program that the user ran with elevated privileges. So sure enough, we can see that our user ran command prompt as admin, they use the system file checker when we did our SFC scan now command and we installed a Wacom tablet driver. So everything you could possibly need to know about your user's elevated session is listed right here in the ServiceNow audit log page. So that was a quick demo of what you get with the admin by request ServiceNow integration. It's nice and simple, it's efficient, and you get the best of both worlds. So get in touch if you have any other questions, otherwise you can get started with the integration manual. That is all from me. I'll see you next time.